This is part 117 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the difference between rows and range clause in SQL Server. This is continuation to part 116, so please watch part 116 before proceeding. Let's understand the difference with an example. Now, based on this employees table on the left, we want to write a query that's going to compute running total of the salary column and then display that running total against every employee row as you can see here. Let's flip over to SQL Server Management Studio. We'll use this employees table for the examples in this demo. Within our result set, we want name, salary, and then the running total. To compute the running total, we are going to use the sum aggregate function and then pass the salary column. And then we'll use our favorite over clause. Within parentheses, we'll specify the order by clause. Let's sort the data by salary column. And let's give this column an alias. Let's call this running total. Let's execute this query and see what we get. Notice we get the running total as expected. For the first row, total is 1000. For the second row, total is 3000. It adds first and second rows together. And for the third row, it is 6000. 1000 plus 2000 plus 3000. So we get the running total as expected. Now the most important thing to keep in mind here is that for the rows or range clause we are not specifying explicitly any value. So SQL Server is using its uh, default value. So what is the default value for rows or range clause? It is range between unbounded preceding and current value. We discussed that in detail in our previous video session. That means we can rewrite this query using its default value. So order by salary and then we can specify its default value. So the default value is range between unbounded preceding and current row. Now when we execute this, we should get exactly the same result. Notice the running total is exactly identical. So we can either write this query like this without its default value or we can specify its default value. Both of these queries should produce exactly the same result and we have seen that in action. Now, we can replace that range clause with rows clause and still in this case we are going to get exactly the same result. Let's actually prove that. So instead of this range clause, I'm going to use the rows clause Let's execute this and see what we get. Notice we get exactly the same result as before. Well, the obvious question that comes to our mind at this point is then what's the difference between range and rows clause? The difference is in the way duplicate rows are treated. Rows clause treat duplicates as distinct values, whereas the range clause treats them as a single entity. Let's actually prove this with an example. So first, let's introduce some duplicate values for the salary column. To do that, I have this update script right here. So let's execute this. Now let's select the data from our employees table and make sure we have that duplicate data. So notice for the first two employees, salary is 1000. For the third and fourth employees, the salary is 3000. So we do have duplicate data. Now let's execute this query. Now at the moment, notice we are using rows clause. Let's see what result we get. Notice that it computes the running total as expected. So for the first row it is 1000, for the second row it is 2000 because it adds first and second rows together and for the third row it is 5000 because it adds 3000 to 2000 we get 5000. So it's working as expected. Now let's replace this rows with range and let's execute our query and see what we get. Notice now the running total is not as expected. You know, for the first two rows, it's displaying the same running total, 2000. Why is that? That's because range clause is treating duplicates as a single entity. And the same is the case for rows 3 and 4. Look at that. It displays 8000 as the running total. That's because it is adding these two together. And when we add 3 and 4 together, we get 6000. When we add that to 2000, we get 8000. And that running total is displayed for both rows 3 and 4. So that's the fundamental difference between rows and range clause. And we can see those examples right here. Here we are using rows clause. So we get the running total as expected. When we use the range clause, Notice that since the duplicates are treated as a single entity, we don't get the running total as expected. 
Now here we have the query that shows all two, all the three side by side. So this query right here, you know, is showing this running totals when no value is specified for rows or range class. So here, you know, the first line here where we are using the sum function, notice that we are not specifying any explicit value for the rows or range class. That means it's using its default value. And here we are for the second sum function call, we're explicitly specifying the value for rows or range class. And on the third line, instead of using range, we are using rows class. And see only, you know, this third call to the sum function gives us the correct running total as expected, whereas the other two doesn't produce um, the running total that we expect. Thank you for listening and have a great day.